stop. All right. Hammer time. <laughs> that's actually ba -da -da -da. from, I don't, it's, I know he said stop on that song, but yeah. that's the Pixies. So yeah. let's not get it confused. There's that, which is crap. And then the Pixies, which is where is my mind? I couldn't play hey, anymore because, hey, we MC don't want. Hammer, MC Hammer is still performing at state fairs for free. Oh, God. For free. Okay. No, well, no. He's on the quote unquote free stage, which isn't necessarily, he, he gets paid. Okay. It's usually like, you know, $10,000 a show, which don't get me wrong. I'll Listen, I, show. I have no issue with him making money at all. At all. So that's fine. However, he can do it, but I bet he doesn't move like he used to. Maybe he does. I don't know. Maybe he's aged well. That, but that was some weird shit he was doing back then. I mean, but it wasn't weird. It was normal because I think Ice Tea or Ice Cube. No, 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 no. Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice. ice yeah. Because Ice Cube don't. He does not dance. <laughs> Have you ever seen him dance? No, yeah. he does not dance. He might do um, a little shuffle thing. But yeah. That's about it. God, I still can't believe that back in the day, Vanilla Ice was like, no, I did not stay, steal that from <laughs> David Bowie and, and Queen, Queen at all. No, no, no he, was, he was like, yeah, there's this dun, 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 dun. And my version is dun, 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 dun. <laughs> they added That's legitimately what he said. I know, he did. Word. Like, yeah, I'm just like, oh. Dude, and it's not like, it, it, it's not like sampling was illegal back then at all. I mean, you just, I think it was the six second limit. And if you could sample a six second spot, it was within copyright. And then, of course, that went away. And so did a lot of good hip hop bands after that rule was screwed. All right. So, what are we talking about tonight? What are we talking about on this segment? We are talking about the players that got left off this uh, 25 man roster who got, um, what's the word, Brett? Who snubbed. got snubbed? Who got snubbed? Who got snubbed? <laughs> Who got left off that looks like a snub, but not really a snub? And then we will give you our starting 11. And I'm sorry if there hasn't been enough um, just a ghastness at this lineup or this roster so far because we're just not surprised, people. So when you're not surprised, when you read, it's hard to be like, oh, I'm so angry. No, this is exactly what I thought could happen. And it happened. Um, so let's start with. It's the players that uh, were left out that might have benefited and uh, maybe got snubbed. Jonathan Gomez. Let's start there. Kid said, hey, I want to at least be in camp. I don't care if I play. I just want to get to know what it's all about. Hey, you could have had 26 hmm. on this roster, Greg. Dude, 26. Dude, it, does, it doesn't matter. The kid's in fucking Louisville. The first game's in Cincinnati. That's a, that's a quick trip. No shit, dude. Just jump in your car. Come over and play with us for a little bit. Jump in your car, down. jump in your car like I did in like 19 or 2005 uh, when I was on tour with my band. And we found out when we were in Kentucky that we were in a dry county and we couldn't buy any liquor after the show. We just county. drove across the fucking border right into Ohio and we <laughs> got a hotel and fucking bought the local liquor store out, drank all night and woke up with big time hangovers. So, yeah, I've been doing this a long time, a lot of practice. So, no, John Jonathan Gomez. I mean, I mean, this is the time to just bring him in. I mean, I don't know what the problem would be. Do you think other players would be like, oh, that motherfucker doesn't deserve to be here. He's a USL little motherfucker. No, they wouldn't have said that. They would have said they, they would know exactly why he was there. A, he can play for Mexico and we're trying to cap, you know, get him interested in, a, in being capped eventually and let him know we're interested. So I don't get that decision at all, Brett. I mean, explain it to again, me. Please. Again, put him on the roster. Have him come over. I mean, again, it's just a quick day trip. I mean, you can get, you can shack him up in the hotel a couple nights. Shack him up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get, get him in his hey. own room. Come on. All right, big daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah. just saying. I'm just saying. It, it's it's not like uh, you're you're gonna have to fly him down to Jamaica or anything like that. Just bring him in for this game. Fuck it. Yeah, let him practice with the team. Get him acclimated. Get him, what's the other word? Integrated. Integrated. Yeah, all those nice words that we've heard. But no. Start learning how to play with verticality. 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 And then uh, Ethan Horvath wasn't on this roster, but I don't, I think that's a snub. I'm sorry. I know people love what he did when he did get to come on and play with us, uh, for us, against Mexico. But 
And, you know, he had, he played well. But let's face it, Horvath is in a fucked up position right now. He is back to riding pine so hard, you know, his tailbone's going to break. So, Just real quick though, you, you said you thought it was a snub. I didn't think it was a snub. Okay. No. Okay. I don't think Horvath I was so heard thrown it. for a loop there because I'm like, I thought it was a snub. But he hasn't really been playing very well. No, I'm season. just naming what? I'm just naming players that we would usually assume would be near or on the team and didn't get called up because of is that a snub? Is it not a snub? Or is it something else? And so for him, it's the something else and he's not playing. And I'm sorry, but get a new agent, dude. Move to a different team where the coach doesn't like the current goalkeeper on a horrible team. All right. Um John Brooks, that's the biggest one. We already read his quote in the last show. We already explained why he's not there or apparently not there. Um, Greg just thinks he's too big of a fuck-up the last time he's played for the U.S. men's national team and that he went in a recent slump, which he was, except for the last two games in the Champions League and in the Bundesliga, where he played ex exceptionally again, which would have singled to most normal people that that's a player not in uh, a slump, but then again, I've also mentioned that he doesn't like big, lumbering, slow center backs. So I don't know. I think Zimmerman's even faster than Brooks. <laughs> I do. No, I don't. But then again, he does call up Ream all the time too. So if he didn't like big, slow center Not backs, this window. Yeah, I don't understand that. And that... Ream, Ream's been playing well for him. So yeah, I'm surprised Ream didn't make it. I think even I even mentioned one time I wouldn't be surprised if he was called up to this window instead of McKenzie or even I don't know uh, Zimmerman. I don't know, but he did not make this team, Ream, and that's fine. He shouldn't be on this team, but Brooks probably should be, even if he was only going to play against Jamaica. But I do have to admit, his last two games for the U.S. men's national team was that it was poor, and so. You're left with that, I guess. And then Brett, I am, excuse me, Greg. Brett, <laughs> I, Greg wants to have that. I almost, I almost put my name and say Gre or Brett, not Greg. <laughs> Greg wants to leave that dirty taste in, in Brooke's mouth a little longer. There you go. Mm -hmm. Taste it. Taste it. Um, <laughs> next one, Hoppy. Not surprising. Hoppy's not playing for Mallorca. I still would have brought him. Still would have brought him. I don't care. I'll bring him. Yeah. Okay, make make that a 27-man roster. I don't care. Get Hoppy out of the, you know, off the bench at Mallorca and give him some practice time with the U.S. men's national team. Continue to have him as part of the team and then convince him to fire his agent too. All right? I mean, come on. I mean, the, what was the owner? What did he say when Hoppy joined the team, Brad? Wasn't it something like, yeah, you know, all the other big teams are doing it. They all got their Americans. I, so, I know I know people have said that. I've never actually seen the quote, so I can't validate that. Well, yeah, it was in Spanish. My Spanish is shit. But still, Stu Holden has still not accounted for this at all, as far as I understand, on in Twitter or anywhere else. Did people actually? Some people actually added him and asked the question. It was great. Did they? Yeah, I know at least three or four people did. No response from uh, uh, Tight Shirt Junior. No, of course not. Okay. All right. Maybe not, next time. Maybe next not, time. Not shocking. <laughs> uh, Conrad left off, but you know Conrad's like on a roller coaster right now with Marseille, so I'm not gonna throw a fit about this. But when you tell me Roldan's on the team and he'll probably likely be uh, a might might be a winger replacement, and he's not, that kind of aggravates me a little bit. Um, but Roldan, to his defense, is just he just keeps fucking MLS teams left and right this season. Yes, they're in a little slump right now, but yeah. dude, every time I have to do the MLS stats, there he is. Christian Roldan, assist. Christian Roldan, goal. Christian Roldan, assist and goal. Fuck you. Stop doing. Stop playing so well. Um, yeah, there's some there's some players that are just doing well in MLS, but then just don't have the legs for international. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I mean, he did have that great moment where he stole the ball and he got it to Aronson. In fairness, so that's the same. That's the same game that uh, that Legit had a great game for the United States. So, I mean, it's one of those things where we always we, people always thought like they say like oh, this person or this person or this person's not ready for international or not international quality. 
then you say that, and like the next game they have a good game, but then it's followed by a series of bad games. Or mediocre games at best. Yeah, I think Roldan has had some medium games. And then he had that one great steal where he got it to Pepe. Pepe got it to Aronson. We score. So I think he's had brighter moments than either Leggett or Ariola as far as providing assists or a critical play that led to a goal. So I'm less going to be less hard on Roldan than I'm going to be on, say, but Leggett. Fairness, he's also gotten less playing time than the other two. So more of a sample size. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, no sergeant. Again, we both said maybe we said this last time. Yeah. Leave him off. But then I think this time, this time, I think we we kind of really kind of discussed whether or not to call him up. And it was less sure. Yeah. I mean, quite frankly, I mean, the kid kid still needs to get some confidence. Uh, I would be fine with him getting a call up, but I'm more than fine with him not getting the call up. He needs to he needs to focus and settle down, uh, and then you know we're bringing Jesus and I think we're I think I I, I like the I like the uh, the striker uh, duo we have. That's yeah I'm fine with the two. Um, as far as Sergeant settling down, I think he needs to fucking unsettle down. I think he needs to get fucking vicious. I think I mean, he needs I mean, I'm to get... settling down into the team. I'm not necessarily saying that he needs. I to think he has settled down on the team. Around. He he's like a regular starter for that team. Sure. But the problem with that team is that he doesn't demand the ball, and so until he gets a little more cutthroat, and we've said this a thousand times, so it's like beating a dead horse. Stop with the nice guy fucking act. Like let's get serious, Josh. Do start, you want start taking chances? Start you know instead yes. of making instead of making the obvious pass, why not take a touch and take a twenty five yard rip? Fucking Take let him chances. Do it. Yes, Pookie does it. Why don't you do it? You know, I know Pookie's he's like a fucking legend at that club, but fuck that, man. You he's not good enough to, to help that team win. So you got to step up. You've got to become a leader on that team, Josh. And I just don't see that in him right now. And and I don't know if it's even in his character. And that might be one of those minor character flaws that costs you your a really seriously awesome career. On a good team. Yeah, I know. You brought that up last time. I don't (laughs) think that's completely true. I mean, you're from the Midwest. You're not a bitch. No, no, I'm not a bitch. Exactly. You demanded the ball. You're like, give me the fucking ball, bitch. That's what you said. You you cannot imagine Sergeant saying that to anybody. I get it, but it's still an attitude, Brett. Yes, you didn't have the skill to become a U.S. men's national team player. But Uh, while you did play, you demanded the fucking ball. You're like, give me the ball. I am the guy that's going to score this. The goal. I I will say, I've looked at enough enough MLS players over the years, and I thought to myself, you know, if I went to a college and actually played, or at the time, because we've got to remember that (laughs) time when I was going to college, there weren't really academy teams, and there were no homegrown players. No, there weren't. So the the uh, uh, the super draft was the, the thing, you know. I mean, both so of us. If, were... if I had gone, if I had gone to a college to actually play, who knows? You wouldn't have picked. I would have. You wouldn't. Uh, you wouldn't have picked Indiana. I can tell you that. <laughs> you know, I, I would still. I, I would still have gone to Indiana, and I still would have loved to have tried out, even if got, getting on their uh, practice squad it would have been a lot of fucking fun. Yeah, I mean, it's 2020, though. I was burnt out by 18. I've been playing since I was four, you know, year round since eight. Uh, it's just, I mean, at that point, I was just like, hey, you know what? I want to I want to get, get drunk and have fun with uh, people, you know? Well, the, yeah, that was all that <laughs> was on my mind and music. And by then, my knees were already done. So mm-hmm. my knees were done at 17. Didn't get done until I was like 28. Yeah, all sad things. We both went to IU and. Uh, we both did not play for IU for obvious reasons at this point. Um, that was way too good. That's a problem. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> <laughs> the sergeant thing, just to close it up, um, you know, again, it's like if when I was playing um, for Fort Knox High School and we were in the um, state finals, if I had the ball and Chad McGowan, our center forward, made a run, and I did not pass him that fucking ball when he was open, he would give me the fucking evilest motherfucking stare. That's what Josh Sargent needs to get to. You need to be like, I. you should have fucking passed that ball to me. What are you doing? Rashika, 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 stop being a moron. Pass the ball to me. Rashika never passed the ball to me. Verda Bremen, and now here we're doing the same clown show at fucking Norwich City. It's unbelievable. 
Um, after Sergeant is DK. Um, Greg did me, me, uh, mention DK, and he sort of insinuated in his interview that it was a verticality and yep, a style issue. Yep. Yeah. And that's why he's not on the team. Well, I don't, when it comes to playing direct, you can't you can't play an athletic, very large striker. And if that's in the a case, very direct style play, the lack yeah. of verticality there is astounding. Exactly. <laughs> and so, if that's really the case with Greg, then DK and P Fock are P Focked. They are P Focked because <laughs> they are not going to get called up again um, because they are more direct players. They are tall players. They you know, finish in the box. So, uh, well, and again, with, when it comes to the quote unquote verticality aspect, it's just very much a direct style of play. Like you're, you're attacking the, you're attacking the defense, you're moving forward and you're being very aggressive with it. Well, I mean, having somebody who's good in the air, having somebody who's a big presence, I mean, uh, Pepe's a presence cause he knows where to be in the box. He's also very tall. Despite what you look at, when you when you're looking at him, you may not necessarily realize he's as tall as he is. Yeah, he's a tall guy. He's a tall guy. And so uh, is DK. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you you almost would think that you'd want these these big presences in the box. You know, you would so, think. I mean, it, when you're laying those crosses in there, whether it's on the ground or up in the air, you want somebody getting on top of it. If you had a foot race, talking about verticality between DK and Pepe, on like the fifty yard dash, I think DK is faster than Pepe. Honestly, I think it's more about how Greg wants them to run the channels and provide that verticality. And I think he likes the way Pepe does it, and he's not really 100% well, sold on DK yet. So the, the, the problem with how Berhalter plays, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I've always felt that he, but Berhalter's never really gotten the best out of the nines. And then Pepe showed up, and Pepe's done well. Mm -hmm. But again, it's only a small sample size with Pepe, and we've brought this up many a time. Yeah, and I, I again, he, he he catapulted himself up to the uh, up to the top, uh, as far as the depth is concerned. Um, yeah, but it's a small sample size. We don't know what's going to happen over the long haul, right? But I think again, and I know we get called out for this, but I still stand firm that I don't think that Burhalter is getting the best out of his nines. No, and I I think uh, whether it's Pfock, whether it's DK, whether it's Sergeant, they for whatever reason, maybe it was just the style of play at that time. But they were checking way too far back, way too far back, and they were non-existent in the attack itself. There were times where they were checking back, and our wingers were like twenty yards further up the field than than uh, our nine. Yeah, just, it, it, they 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 play themselves out of the game, and I don't know if that's a if that's their own personal style or if that's a tactical choice. But I haven't really seen it with with, uh, with Pepe, so I don't know. Well, they're not robots, so they are going to do things on the field that Berhalter may not like. And so I guess we got to take that into account. And apparently Pepe does run the um, the lanes like Berhalter wants more than anybody else. So I think that's why Pepe's going to start, and we'll get to that. The only other guy we can talk about that got the big Berhalter salami slapped across his cheek was De La Torre. And we kind of already spoke to that in the last show. So I don't think we really need to go into that too much there's, there's no room for him on the midfield it was, just, it, was, it was too cluttered already we can't bring him in he's just nope. not that good i would have dropped legit and brought him in but that's what? me that's crazy talk derek stop i know that. stop that <laughs> and by the way for those of you One of those twitter conspiracy theorists out there derek seriously stop. well that's what i would have done <laughs> legit's not too legit for me um Dest Boy, is, is he too legit to quit is the question. He should quit the U.S. national team. Again, I love Sebastian Legette. He's injury, post injury. He's got a shrine dedicated to him. He's just One not. He's just not the player he used to be. He can't make the cuts the way he used to be after that serious injury. I, I have noticed a decline in his play, both for club and for country. All right, and then uh, Dest is injured, so people don't freak out. I saw this on other shows. They're like, where the fuck is Des? Des is injured, apparently. We brought this up in the other show, too. He's injured. Yep. Um, not that bad, but not bad enough that he can't come play for us. So there's that. Um, and we already explained that, you know, Ger Berhalter was not doing Barcelona any favors or Des no. any favors with the new manager and allowing him to impress the new manager. That was not it. He said if Des is healthy, he would have been called up, period. End of story. So now we got to get to our starting 11 and um i mean again we're trying to guess we'll we'll try to guess greg 
and then we'll critical be critical or add our own you know point of view on position but we'll start a goalkeeper and i think and i haven't seen this on other shows because i think herc had stefan um on his show i think turner's gonna start i really do i don't think we need that fiddly fuckaroo in the backfield yeah, with stefan i agree 100%. versus mexico yep. i just i and yes yeah, so this is going to be uh, the starting 11 versus mexico since that's that fiddly fucking around in the backfield thing is not necessary then i'd rather have a shot stopper and i think greg will too and i don't think stefan's gonna start i think stefan's gonna start I, against I, jamaica know, I, I think stefan's a, a, a still a quality sh uh, shot stopper i think turner's a better shot stopper yes but i think uh stefan's ability to play out of the back probably projects him further in berhalter's mind i stand firm that i think turner's gonna start because again i mean Turner's been absolutely solid for us. And not saying that Stefan didn't do well in the Costa Rica game. He wasn't really tested outside of that one opportunity that caused, uh, resulted in the goal. Uh, but I, I'm going to go with the tried and true at this point. Yeah, I mean, listen, if you've been watching MLS at all this season and you watch some of the save highlights from this season from Turner, they're absolutely mind-blowing. The shit he has, like, cat-like fucking reflexes, it's Stuff it's he's almost done with the United States national team. Let's stick with that. Yeah, it's you can still, even just still top notch. No, no, you could stick to that footage if you wanted to. I mean, the guy is just amazing, and you know he's probably never going to be the best player uh, with his feet, and that's okay because after a certain age, it's hard to get that much better at something you're not good at. You can get a little bit more better, but not a lot. And you know he's a baseball player, so there's that too. Um, Let's move to the left back spot, and I think Robinson's starting both games unless something what? odd happens. It's crazy talk, and I shouldn't call him Robinson because we have two Robinsons. We'll call so him I will... Jedi. He's Jedi. Jedi. Yep. So Jedi starts at left back, at right back. Well, here's where the debate comes in because Probably. I put down Yedlin, but Herc says Scally. He really I believes put... that Scally's going to start. I, I think Scally would do perfectly fine. But I also put down Yedlin because Berhalter is going to go with what's comfortable in Yedlin's experienced. Yes, and, and we, I, I, I see, I see that being, I see that being the route that he's going to go. Absolutely. Yeah, I think whenever you think of Greg Berhalter and his roster starting eleven, you have to think of the Jimi Hendrix song, uh, "Experienced," right? Because that's what he likes. He likes the snuggle nuts shit. Like if you, I've been close and snuggled into his ball sack. That's what he's comfortable with. So. You know, honestly, that's it's gonna be Yedlin. I'd like to see Scally Herc, but I don't think it's gonna happen. That's all. Maybe um, as a sub slash starting against Jamaica. Who knows? I think that um, he will start against Jamaica. Maybe I think that's a much more better prospect for a guy who's starting his first national team game. Yeah, I just don't see Greg throwing him to the wolves in the first game against God, Mexico. One team in, if there's one team in the qualifier game <laughs> from against, it'd be Mexico. Yeah, that could be ugly, if, especially if he doesn't have the chemistry with the two CBs uh, to his left, So, uh, or, or the midfield in front of him. Um, so that is that, and then we get to the midfield. and oh, I just, Center backs. Or center back, I'm sorry. Yeah, Miles, and uh, I think it's going to be Zimmerman. Who do you got? I got Miles and Zimmerman as well. Yep. And people are going to be, well, why not? Chris Richards, Richards. again. Uh, we're, same yeah. thing with the Edlin. Same thing with the Edlin. Exactly. Has not snuggled ball, um, Greg's balls long enough. Not has enough. not has not warmed them long enough. He he's only, in fact, uh, played how many games? Uh, four games for us, but not against Mexico in this kind of situation in well, World Cup ball. Started one of those games too. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just could, don't could see. Rich, it. Could Richard step in and do well? Sure. Could yeah. Not saying anything against Richard starting. That'd be great. I'd love it. I'd but be fine. I, th I think Zimmerman. I think Zimmerman's going to be the man to go to. Uh, Berhalter's talked about his uh, ability as a leader. Uh, he he picked up the uh, uh, captain's band last uh, window when Adams didn't play. That's know, so. correct. After Adams, it's Zimmerman as the leader of this team, um, as the player. So I mean, how do you look at that and go? I mean, he's no, no, Greg's going with Zimmerman because that's what's going to make his balls warm. And that's what we're going to go with. Um, so we move to Adams. Um, uh, we move to, excuse me, I might as well just say 
the six is Adams. The six is always Adams as long as Adams is healthy. So but there's he's injured. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. I would expect Greg for the eights to play McKenney and Musa though. Until until he's injured or until we've qualified. Because if we qualify earlier, like say with like a couple games in hand. Dream on. Yeah, I'm just I'm just, <laughs> I'm just <saying. laughs> let's let's shoot to the stars and just imagine what could happen. We just haven't made the top three in all honesty. I know, but so, that's not gonna be that easy. I'm look not how, saying it is. Yeah, look saying. how tight it is. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just say it happens. Uh and we qualify with like two games in hand. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, we can at that point start debating who's going to be starting at six. But until then, as long as Adams is healthy, yeah, you start him. You start him, and even if we're playing in the three game window, you start him. Pull him out early if you want to give him a rest. But oh yeah, you, you yeah. start him. You start him absolutely. Start yeah. your game off on the best foot possible. I think we'll see you know Adams starting both games. Unless he gets injured or he gets another yellow, and then in that case you got a cost us. So, um, sure, but yeah, yeah I point. think I do think Burhalter's going to go ahead and roll the dice and start Adams, McKenney, and Musa. Even though Adams and McKenney both have yellow cards, and if they get another one, then they're automatically out of the next game, all ninety. And I think that's fine. And I saw Max Spredos, who calls himself the Soccer OG, OG. say, yeah, and say that you know. Um, uh, he might, you know, he might not start some of these guys because the yellow cards or, and I just think, no, you, you that one way or another, whether he doesn't start in this window, we carry the yellow card over to the next window. You're still, you're still going to have that issue. Yeah. And Play every game, put your best foot forward. The other thing is that Max said that Jamaica is the fourth best team in this, this octagon. No way. No way. They're currently sitting last. I know. what. No, I don't think they're last. I think they jumped up one because of the last window. Let's double check that just to be sure. And do you have shit playing in the back there? Oh, what are you talking about? I heard. I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Jamaica's not last. They no. are uh, tied for second to last. They have five points. Okay. Honduras is last. Yeah, that's almost surprising, actually. And after but, that Nations League game, I mean, who would have suspected that uh, Honduras would have been last place right now? Yeah, I thought it'd be Costa Rica because they're like dropping like a rock to me. Um, God damn it, they couldn't make this shit any easier on Wikipedia. And yes, that's what I'm looking for. What the fuck are you doing on Wikipedia for? I know. I should just go to uh, U.S. Soccer for my non-information, <laughs> <laughs> my misinformation. What are you, lo what are you looking for? Hmm. The qualifying um, bracket. Yeah, I was just like, why is Max saying that Jamaica is the fourth best team in this? And you know what else he predicted? Two points out of this window. Hmm. Two. Two. Two points. Are you fucking shitting me? Two points? No, three minimum. Three minimum. I don't care if we if we yeah. lose to Mexico, we need three versus Jamaica. I don't think going Jamaica is like playing on a goat patch. No, they have finely manicured fields in Jamaica. We'll be playing in a decent field. Trimmed with scissors. I mean, listen, I mean, prior to the game, if you're in Jamaica, I mean, everybody... You're not going to get like um, the guys that show up at three in the morning and start honking their horns outside of your hotel room, right? So that doesn't happen in Jamaica. Not like it does in, in Mexico or Costa Rica or Honduras. They're pretty chill in Jamaica. They don't do that nasty shit. These uh, little, little, you know, things you can put in your ear called the earplugs and, uh, you know. Yeah, you can have like Cover the over your eye. You can get some noise reducing, you know, white noise machines or whatever. Yeah, you like the ocean. You know, what I'm saying? <sighs> it's not going to bother you as much because you're already you're already down by the you sea. <laughs> Did you just do a <laughs> car honking? Was that a seagull? No. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. It could have been a tug, a tug, a tug, tugboat. <laughs> you know, it's not bugging you as much, but they don't yeah. do that in Jamaica. All right, so <laughs> let's move on to left winger. And I do think, Greg, if as long as Polisic plays another 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes again for Chelsea, I think he's going to start him at left wing. I really do. I really I'd be do. fine with that. I'd be fine with that, but I also see Aaronson being our most productive offensive weapon. I know this entire, this entire qualifier. Mm -hmm. So I I don't see him. I see Aaronson starting, and we we talked about in the previous segment that if uh, that he doesn't uh, Berhalter mentioned something along the lines of he doesn't see Aaronson playing right right mid or right wing. Right wing. Yeah, he said. But no. What that means is that either Polistic is starting or Aaronson is starting. I mean, you could play um, Aronson for 65-70. I just hate yanking Aronson out at any point because he's such a vital player. Um, and, you know, in my kind of wish list, I had Aronson on right wing and and uh, Polisic on the left. Uh, but I'm not going to get that wish. I think you're right. I think it's either going to nope. be Polisic or Aronson. Nope. And if it's Polisic, he'll play like 60 or 65, and then you'll see Aronson come on. Or Greg will think to himself, we're going to wear Mexico out for 65 minutes and have them chase Aronson around that field. Then we're going to fucking power it up and bring fucking Polisic in there. I mean, and good they're, luck they're, to them. They're, wor they're worse problems to have. Now, the, the difference being is if, if Aronson's on the pitch, does he draw the attention and the fouls that Polisic would if he were on the pitch? No, because they don't exactly go about it the same way. Um, yeah, very good point in that sense. Yeah, Polisic is much more um, um, north and south on his attacking, whereas um, Aronson tends to be a lot more east and west and then north and south, but usually north. So I that's probably why he doesn't get fouled as much because he's not seen as much of a threat um, as somebody who's trying to, like, dagger right well, down the middle, you know? Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, I mean, I could see the idea being start Aronson, wear Mexico down a bit. Then throw in Pulisic in, in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would be a dagger. Well, yeah. while, while we're talking about this, who who, who do you have a right, a right wing? So, in my wish list, I had Aronson. But in my Greg list, I had Areola. Because I just know it. I so just know wish, it. My wish list would have been Wea. Okay. okay, Wea and then Aronson, obviously, opposite of each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then Polissa coming in late in the game. Right. But uh, since we're talking about Aronson not possibly playing on the right, and that means Polissa coming in late in the game, we're talking about Wea and Areola on the right, and I see Berhalter playing Areola. Well, I got to say, when Greg was asked if Aronson could be played on the right, he looked he had a like an alien look on his dickhead face. He really did. He did. He it's, he looked like it's, it's no. Gonna look, it's gonna look weird when that face gets squished in, and it does. Like his little <laughs> temples get all squished in and shit. He's like a big <laughs> penis head. And he said, uh, "No, I don't see. You know that uh, the oh. quote is. Uh, let me see. There's no urgency to move Aronson to the right." And if there is no urgency, then there is nothing because that's how Greg operates. Not he does games, not. No. He does no. not operate on anything but urgency. Well, Otherwise, he toddles around like a turtle. Anyhow. Let's let's consider last window. Ariola was going to start all three games. Mm -hmm. He was. So, so there you go. That's all the evidence you need. <laughs> That's all the evidence you need. I mean, so I mean, I know, I know, I know Wade came in against uh, Costa Rica and had a hell of a game. But, I mean, come on. But Filippo, I think, brought up a funny point in one of his shows recently where he said, look at the way um, Burhalter hugs Ariola. Yeah. It's it's almost like Greek. Like it really Greek. is. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like, it's like uh, son. It's like, it, you know, it's like his son is on the team. You know, oh, good God, good job. Good job. You know, so maybe their their relationship is really tight, and I think it must be because Ariola gets called up hell or high water, and of course he just scored that amazing goal for DC United, which made I think MLS's goals of the week, and 
I wish he would score like one of those for us when he plays for us. So uh, I guess not. Um, and then uh, we've got center forward. That's a pretty easy one you would think, but Ferrer has been yeah. playing really there's, there's well. No but. There's no but. It's Pepe. It's Pepe. But not not against Mexico. Come on. Yeah, Ferrer's a good backup, though. I got to say sure. that. You I'm know, I mean, good. listen. I'm not bitching about the fact that he got called up over Sergeant. He's scoring. Sergeant is languishing and in pain. We need we, we, need, we need our strikers running with confidence. Exactly. That's so. the and people don't understand that, Brett. They're going to say, "Oh, well, Sergeant's playing in the Premier League." Yes, but he's got zero confidence. Do you want a guy with zero confidence coming into your team? No, I don't. I'd rather have a guy who's scoring bushels of goals in MLS. Because I mean, so. Just to put into perspective, if a player who's not scoring goals, a striker who's not scoring goals and lacks confidence, comes into a game and misses an opportunity, let's let's just say it's a clear cut opportunity, that's gonna fuck around with his head. Yeah, and then every play after that is gonna get more and more fucked up. Yeah, so I, I want I want our strikers going in there, you know, just ready to roll. Like, oh yeah. He's going to score five goals against Mexico. Fuck that, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I want that. I want that confidence. I want that, that the energy there, you know. And that's kind of why I miss Hoppy because he he brings that. And I know he's getting you know reamed in the uh, you know in the old uh, well anyhow. Yeah, he's he's just not playing in Mallorca. He sat, you know, this, that last weekend he sat for the full ninety. The Weekend before, they're like, "Hey, you're not even on the team, bitch." And then they replaced like all three forwards with three other forwards ahead of him for the game on the weekend. It's like, "Damn, I'm number seven on this bitch. I'm number seven on this list." That's what you're telling me. I'm number seven. Man, man, he made a bad move. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Bundesliga two is looking awfully damn good right about now. Yeah, dude, he'd be scoring goals <laughs> like lightning. In, for Schalke right now in Bundesliga, two Bundesliga. So um, I think that will do this segment, unless you've got anything weird to add. Did you bring up your... No, uh, I didn't bring it up. No, no Your we, McKinney we, thing? We, we, we breezed right over McKinney on, on this lineup. So many, many of you might know, if you follow us on Twitter, uh, I had a bit of an issue this week when trying to watch the Juventus replay against uh, uh, Zenit. Mm. Is that it? Yeah, is that Saint Speed Saint Petersburg? Saint Petersburg. <laughs> yeah, in Soviet Russia. <laughs> oh, I was trying to say how they'd say it in Pittsburgh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, so I, I I work later now, and I get home closer to six o'clock. So I'm like, well, I've got to watch some of these games on replay. And then Kenny started, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch Juve play. You know, Juve is sort of my European team. Anyways, I've followed them since yep. I was a youth. And uh, uh, so I decided to sit down in Paramount, loaded it up, watched it all, and I knew their goals goals of plenty. I already knew the final score, so I was like, "All right, I'm yeah. I can't wait to see how McKinney played. Watch all these goals occur. Watch Juve move on in the Champions League. This is great." And then, uh, man, I'm about I was about 74 minutes into it. I'm like, "There's six goals. Where are all these goals coming in at?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I, I decided to back out, and I realized that the top top uh, replay of previous uh, Champions League game on Paramount at the time was the October match. Those cocksuckers. And I was so pissed. I'm like, I just spent fucking – I mean, McKinney was still in the game, and he still had that, that little dyed little fluff of his hair. Yeah. I'm like, all right, this is recent. Man. Now, you... It was recent. It was, it was recent a couple weeks back. You got and bamboozled. I spent <laughs> way too much time watching this, and I'm just like, "Where are all the goals? Come. All, all the second half. All the second half. Here they come. Seventy-four minutes. In oh, there's ten start. minutes left. God damn, six goals in ten Ooh. minutes. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. You know, I would recommend. <laughs> I would recommend check, uh, checking the uh, date of the video before you watch. It was. It, it was. It was above the Chelsea uh, Malmo game. I huh. assume that was the most recent game. Well, they got you to watch it. Fuck you, Paramount. <laughs> I, li I like I like your cast you got for the U.S. national team games, but uh, uh, you're making my list right now. 
Well, remember when all these countries, uh, all these companies used to be separate companies? Yeah. Remember that? It's like Paramount was its own company, CBS was so ESPN was its own company, so was ABC its own company. Man, they're all like in bed together now. Got a couple it's of a, oligarchies now. It's like it's really Running weird. All of our it's media. Like, like, yeah, it's a massive sort of yeah, it's crazy. There are like seven companies that control all the media, major media outlets in this country. That's not healthy, folks. We gotta we gotta get out of that. That's not good. There was a time when major newspapers were all local. They their stories were written locally, they were covered locally, and then the national stuff they had stuff brought in, but they all were their own bosses. And now, man, there's like uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but they own like 150 different newspapers across the country 150 in big big towns and cities this is crazy guys that's what you call a um uh a vertical monopoly right What's when like you a, what a fox media or whatever owns like 80 percent of the local news stations or something like that regardless yeah but the vertical all, 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 this, all this is telling us all this is telling you guys is to start listening to us more Right. Stop listening to the main media. <laughs> Except for Herc. You can listen to Herc. Sure. I, I like Hercules Gomez. I think he's great. Um, but outside of that, you, you listen know. To, uh, listen to Jimmy. I like Jimmy. I like Jimmy. I mean, Lawless is an idiot, but he said some like interesting Lawless. things I like, I like every once stuff. in a while. So, I mean, and <laughs> well, I'm, sure, starting, I'm starting to grow on one all this show right now. I haven't Dude. watched it at all yet. I gotta uh, get Taylor, to that. Taylor, Taylor sent us one recently. He's like, "Hey, dude, you guys need to watch us." His uh, his most recent one. Um, and I I listened to like the first like eight minutes of it, and then I had to leave work, so I'm gonna sit back down and watch it. You know I what? Guess, I guess the last uh, six to ten minutes is 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 great. I guess. I think there's we'll you know because I think Filippo's going on with all the show, right? I don't know yeah. if it's already even happened. Has it? Uh, not that I, I don't think it's happened yet, but yeah. I know that uh, when all said, "Hey, man, I got to get you on the show." Yeah, so I think that's going to happen. And as long as he doesn't figure out that you know I was D Rack back in two thousand and twelve, now he knows. Now he knows. Then we'll be okay. We might get <laughs> invited on his show. Until the next time on the straight red card, this has been 40 minutes of totally total idiocy. Um, but no, not all. I mean, a lot of that was good information we just gave you here. So like, subscribe, um, share it with your uncle Gomez if you have one, and um, first name or last. I mean, he could be the guy on uh what's the what's the mo what's the program with Gomez? Um Adam's family. Adam's family, yeah. yeah. Oh, they have that new movie coming out. We did not mean to the like animated movie, yeah. I did not mean to like, you know, give that any, you know, shine. I don't know if it's Cal Arts or not, but still. Yeah, don't go watch that probably. It's probably shit. Go back uh, and watch the originals, or not the originals. Go back and watch the uh, 90s. Yeah, those were pretty good. Those, those were weren't bad. bad. Yeah, those were fun. When we were kids. Why am I so. spacing his name? Who played Gomez? Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh don't do this Gomez, to this. Now we're about to Adam. end the show. We're about to end the show. Screw that. You can't do this to us, Brett. No. It is... It is. Uh, I, 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 I'm looking at it right now. I can't think of the name. Wiki it. Is, it uh, Raul, Wiki. Uh, Raul Julia. Uh, Raul Julio. And Julia. now. Jesus Christ. I can't fucking talk. And, and now you can't even pronounce his name. Great. All right. So this show ended <laughs> at the 38th minute. You God. think? No, it didn't. All, All right. right. Time frame. Good night, folks. Cheers. <laughs>